My guest today is Israel Ekbo. Israel, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you very much, David, for inviting me to the show. Um, happy to have you here. Um, you and I are colleagues, so I know what you do, but they don't know. Tell us what you do. All right. So my name is uh, Israel Ekbo, and I'm a partner solution architect with Microsoft Global Partner Solution Solutions, uh, covering the Americas region. So that includes Canada. Uh, the United States and Latin America. Uh, in the team, my er area of focus and my area of specialization includes uh, data workloads. Sometimes that includes open source data workloads. And um, recently, I've also had to cover a lot of the AI um, applications and what our partners are building. I work primarily with um, independent software vendors. So these are partners that are creating solutions for the Azure marketplace, but there are times where we partner with system integrators and service partners to support other ISVs to build their solutions. So that's what I do for the team, and I am very passionate about open source. Um, I present at conferences. I help to organize uh, some some of these conferences, like the one for Con Confluent and um, uh, Elastic, the Kafka Summit, and the Elasticon. And um, in Microsoft GPS, I'm also one of the community managers for our internal calls that we have where we bring ideas and partners to present to the rest of the team. So that's that's what I do in, that's a in, lot. A, in a nutshell um, in the, <laughs> for, for Microsoft. All right. And uh, you mentioned data and you mentioned AI. And before we started recording, we we're talking about a technology that kind of combines those two. T tell me about that. Yeah, so um, today's focus uh, for this call is going to be on vector databases. Uh, vector databases is a very critical ingredient in some of the advanced artificial intelligence applications that are being built today. Uh, we have different data formats that can be very difficult for you to uh, search for the content when it's time for us to retrieve it. So you can upload like an audio file, you can upload a video file, you can have large amounts of text, you can have um, images, uh, but when it comes time for us to uh, query the database to retrieve them, they are not like SQL databases or um, document stores where you can just easily search for, for, for the information based on the content of a particular field. Right. whether it is present or not. So vector databases are these advanced databases, special type of database that allows you to convert the entire uh, file content or the entire uh, blob into a series of numbers. Hmm. And these, these numbers represent different uh, features and different parts of the, of the content, whether it's uh, image, whether it's audio, whether it's video, whether it's text. Um, it allows you to represent it in, in, in numbers. So once you have it in this number format, which is kind of like an abbreviated form of the of the record, it now makes it possible for us to use mathematical formulas to search easily search for the audio, for the video, for the text, and sometimes you know um, different uh, uh, content. So some of the things that you may not be aware, if you go to some of these search engines like Google or Bing, uh, you are able to upload. A, a photo or an image, and it should be able to look in the vector store in the back end and retrieve other pictures that match that kind of uh, picture. So right. this can be very effective and very um, easy when searching for, for content because you can come and start to describe, well, find me a blue dress that has like a cross on the upper left hand corner, and that would just, you know, be, be very confusing. But because we're using a vector database, all those different data points are encoded in these numbers and you can uh, uh, find it very quickly. Uh, this, this capability is now used by e-commerce websites to help customers up, um, upload a picture of what they, they would like to, to search for, like clothing or things like that, and is able to help them find using vector databases to quickly uh, find the content. Similarly, if you look at a, um, some of these um, services like um, Amazon Music or Apple Music and all these things, 
they are able to uh, detect copyright violations when new content is uploaded by using vector databases to search for similar content to make sure that what you are trying to upload does not uh, uh, override or violate somebody else's copyright permissions right. or, or, or privileges. So I noticed that's uh, on. Uh, I post a lot of the videos on YouTube, including this one. Yeah. <laughs> and one time I went to a Microsoft party, you know, an employee party, and I I took a video of people dancing. And uploaded it to YouTube, and they flagged the music in the background as a copyright violation. The DJ was playing a song <laughs> that was copyright. Yeah, that was that was vector databases, in, you know, in action. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I thought so, it was a I thought it was a victimless crime. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Um, sometimes we, we we assume it's a victimless crime, but um, if that kind of thing is allowed to to continue, you know, some of those. Um, People that have invested the energy to, to create the content, you know, could get, why it could, exists. could get frustrated. If I try to pass it off as my own song, for example, yeah, or, or use it to make money uh, without yeah. compensating the artist, that's that's why it really exists. Yeah. So so um, that, so that yeah, so so, that, so yeah. it's not just audio and, and images; it's also words as well, right? Vector data, databases can uh, change the way that we search for content in language, right? Yeah. Um, before before the, the use of vector databases, um, it was um, almost nearly impossible for us to uh, search for content like documents using the meaning of the phrase. Uh, so if you are searching for for items, sometimes you may end up just typing in keywords, you know, David uh, and food, and okay. you search for that, you know, to find things that that, that have um, uh, either uh, the the word food or the word meal or just like a direct synonym, you know, of that. Mm -hmm. So if uh, I, I, um, if we are using only keyword search, and um, there is an algorithm for this, you know, known as uh, BM25, that is typically what you know search engines like Lucene, like Apache Solar, like Elasticsearch, you know, used to use in the past before vector search was. Um, now possible. So if you use something like that, if you wanted to search for documents that contain the phrase, you know, David uh, has left to go and eat, or David has left to go and buy uh, to, to, to get some food, or David has left to go and get a meal. Um, you see, uh, meal, food, and to go and eat, you know, those are things that are, are, are very similar. So if you are using a keyword search, and you are typing in David has left to, to, to eat or David has left to get a meal or David has left to get some food. And the, the documents in the database does not contain the exact phrase. Sometimes it may come back and say, well, I cannot find anything that matches that content. Mm -hmm. But with, uh, with vector search now, we only need to have something that has the same meaning and it, it you know it can now go to the database and be uh, and be able to match you know david has left to get some uh, um so some food with david has left to go uh, you know to, to go and eat or david uh, david left for a meal because if you look at the contextual the semantic meaning of all those phrases they are saying exactly the same thing but with keyword search it's nearly impossible to right. always match it like that but with with vector search we are looking more for the meaning and not the exact uh, match of the of the sentence. So this this makes it very easy for us to now uh, use it in some of these um, uh, chat GPT like technologies where we are we are um, asking the the artificial intelligence agent questions, and now the, the the agent is able to go to the database and search for documents or chunks of documents that have the same meaning. Not necessarily the same exact keywords, so it um it makes it easier for us to retrieve those documents, insert it into the prompt template, and then send that to the language model to come back with responses that would make sense for us. Well, it's doing the database is doing some natural language processing of mm -hmm. not only the existing document but also the the query term, the the search term. Yes, trying to match on that. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Um, when I when I search a vector database, 
uh, is there a language like SQL that I use, or what's what's the mechanism for searching a vector database? Yeah, that's a very good uh, question, uh, David. So vector databases um, are, are kind of, uh, in terms of how the architecture is designed, it is designed to be similar to how we have like a SQL Server type of database. So there is a, there is an uh, an index component. So the index allows you to organize the the, the data in a way that it makes it easy for us to come and retrieve it. So depending on the type of application, there are three major index formats that, that, that can be used. So if you want exact match, now there are scenarios in which exact match is needed and is necessary. So if you're doing facial recognition, you cannot say, well, this face looks like this other face, you know, maybe it's okay because you need to have an exact match, you know, like for things like passport, driver's license, sometimes, um, you know, uh, criminal investigations. Uh, for, for those kind of scenarios, you have to have an exact match to either rule somebody out or rule somebody in or confirm that this person is the uh, passenger or this person is the owner of the passport. So things like that require exact match. So if you, if you need to do that, then we need to have a data, um, a index format, you know, that is sequential where you're scanning sequentially and you're not approximating. Now, there are some other index formats where if you are deploying a vector database on limited memory devices, like maybe an iPhone or an iPad that does not have, you know, uh, gigabytes, you know, to, 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 to spare, then we use uh, a, a format called inverted file index. That one slices the data into small buckets. And if you want to come and search, it would, you know, try to find a bucket that contains that piece of data. In scenarios where we have a lot of uh, server capacity and memory, then we use um, a index format called um, hierarchical navigable small world or H um, HNSW, you know, for abbrevi abbreviation. And this one is very, very sophisticated because even though it consumes a lot of memory, it is able to retrieve the, the data very, very fast. And, you know, it, 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 it's also very efficient in how it works. So these are the different index formats that we have, but typically before we can search, we have to convert the data from the original format, you know, text, audio, video, uh, image into this number sequence that represents the, the contents we're trying to search for. And then we put it in one of these index formats, depending on the, on the use case. And then we can now use mathematical formulas. You know, we have Euclidean distance, we have um, cosine similarity, we have inner product, and depending on the scenario, we can use any of these mathematical formulas to compare the, the query vector with all the records in the database to find what we're looking for. So that's, or, that's, yeah. that's typically how it works. Are there some of uh, these formulas that work better for some scenarios than for others? Um, yes. So um, Euclidean distance is typically used uh, if we want to find things that are like um, things that are like um, uh, close together in similarity. So you want to group group things into like uh, buckets or uh, uh, categories. But uh, in uh, majority of the cases, we either use uh, inner product or we use cosine similarity. So um, cosine similarity involves a few more steps of mathematical computation uh, than inner product. So if you want something that is very highly performant and you want, you, you want to scan through billions of records, you want to take as few steps as possible. So in that scenario, we typically try to convert the vector into like a normal format or to normalize a vector so that we can use fewer steps to get the same result and we can use inner product to do the comparison across billions of records to find, to find it. So for very large, um, large volumes of, of documents or large volumes of records, uh, inner product with normalized vectors is typically uh, the way to go for that scenario. What are some examples of vector databases on the market? Yeah, today? yeah. So um, right now we are in a time where AI is dominating. So everybody from, you know, from your chef to the barber shop, you know, to the <laughs> pe pastry person, you know, they want to, see how they can leverage AI to help their business. So because of this, because of this huge demand, 
we have a lot of databases that are popping like mushrooms, you know, every, you know, in, a, in every street corner. So, so, so we have so many of them. But uh, maybe maybe um, the most popular ones. What are, what are some? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ones so, that have been a while. Wow. Yeah. So on, on Azure, we have several. You know, we have several of them. So um, the one that I like the most, you know, is Cognitive Search. So this is a first party um, a vector store that also has um, search capabilities. So this is very flexible uh, and you can use hybrid search. You can do keyword search. You can do vector search. So Azure Cognitive Search is my number one go to not only because of the advanced capabilities and flexibility, but it uses uh, that that algorithm I was telling you about the hierarchical navigable small world algorithm, which is very performant in terms of matching the the contents in the database and also retrieving it in very very fast um, uh, fa fast response times. So we have cognitive search. We H -N have the H N S W. Yeah, <laughs> hierarchical navigable small world. So that algorithm is kind of like a map. You know, for example, uh, if you wanted to, if you were in Seattle, Washington, and you wanted to search for a street address in Florida, you know, you would not just zoom into the map at the street level in Seattle and then start searching for all the streets. You will first have to like, you know, zoom out of the map and then zoom into Florida, then zoom into the county, then zoom into the street and then go to go house by house. So that is how the data structure and the index organization works for hierarchical navigable small worlds. So um, that that arrangement makes it very fast to to retrieve data because you don't really have to start searching everywhere. You just zoom, zoom in, you know, so to speak, to where the data is and you can find it. Okay. So uh, we have a uh, Cosmos DB. Uh, Cosmos DB has two uh, APIs. The uh, the Mongo API supports vector store as well, and mm -hmm. then um, the Cydus API uses the uh, PG vector uh, index. And then we also have Azure Redis, um, um, Azure Cache for Redis. So these are uh, these four options are the the, the available vector stores uh, today on Azure. Now, besides what Azure provides, uh, first party, we also have uh, our partners like Elastic that also have their own vector store product, which is very similar to our Azure search um, uh, capabilities. And then we have MongoDB Atlas, we have AstraDB, we have a uh, single store, we have uh, you know Apache Solar, uh, we have Pinecone, Quadrant, um, uh, Vectera, and so many other uh, vector stores that are, are available. But the ones that we like to recommend are the ones in which you don't really have to, because a lot of times, you know, just from experience, we have seen partners, you know, try to do everything. They, they want to set up the virtual machine. They want to install the software dependencies. They want to deploy the database themselves and manage everything. Sometimes that is a good idea when you're doing just a POC and you want to, you know, try things out. But when you're doing production uh, grade application, you don't really have time to focus on tuning the vector database. You just want to focus on your business and you know get going. So because of that, I typically recommend that our partners and ISVs that are building solutions on Azure focus on the either the Azure first party uh, offerings that I just mentioned, you know, the Cosmos DB, the Cognitive Search, the Redis Cache. Uh, focus on that because with that one, all you have to do is to focus on building your, your business and Azure manages everything for you. It can scale up, it can scale down, it can resolve issues that happen. But when you want to be the one that is responsible for running your business and also managing the vector store, sometimes you may get into challenges if you don't really have the experience to run the uh, the, the vector store yourself. Yeah, or even if you have the experience, sometimes it's uh, that time is better spent solving yeah. your business problem. Let Microsoft, let yes. Azure handle what I call the plumbing, the yeah, <laughs> the infrastructure, the the scalability, the this indexing, right? Uh, this is really interesting stuff and something that I haven't uh, done a lot with, so I'm learning a lot. Where can yeah. people go to learn more? Yeah, so uh, we can we're gonna uh, put a link to this um, list of vector databases in the in the show notes. Okay. Um, and then you can you know check out our Azure documentation for cognitive search that will show you the vector store. It will also show you links to the sample repository that allows you to see all the different capabilities of these vector stores. Um, if you want to find out how you can integrate it with other 
uh, AI frameworks like Langchain. There's also documentation on Langchain that talks about how to use cognitive search to do that. Um, we also have you know, the Cosmos DB documentation. So the Cosmos DB vCore API has a complete description of the capabilities that this vector store provides. And then the, the ready sketch documentation also has the same. So there are blog posts, there are product documentation that highlight all the, capabil all the capabilities of these vector stores, as well as the different ways you can integrate them in your application. But we're going to have the link to those vector stores in the show notes so that people can take a look at it on how to get started. And another thing is that um, our team in Global Partner Solutions is coming up with a, a landing zone uh, documentation, which is kind of like best practices and uh, reference architectures on how you can handle different scenarios and vector stores will just be, just be one of those uh, scenarios in which you can consider. So when this document is published, we should be able to take a look at that and see okay. how you can um, use it and solve, solve, solve your scenario. Excellent. Is there anything we haven't talked about on this topic that you think is crucial? Um, yeah, so we have we have been focusing on um, on vector databases, uh, but I wanted to give like a brief overview of how the vector database is really tying with the language uh, models. Okay. So you uh, you see like um, we have different layers, and I have this uh, acronym called RSVP to break down the four different layers that you have to pay attention to. So the R in this scenario, by the way, um, RSVP is a uh, is a French phrase. That means, you know, please respond or respond to can. Respond there, s'il vous plaît. Yeah, respond s'il vous plaît. Fantastic. Uh, do, 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 you, do you speak French? I speak uh, 12th grade French. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it sounds 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 very good. <laughs> I, I don't speak French, but, uh, you know, when I listen to, listen to, the, to the people in Paris, it sounds just, just like how you said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what, what was I? So, uh, RSVP or respond s'il vous plaît is, uh, you know, a phrase that uh, I use so that it makes you take a look at the four different components and see how you can uh, use that to remember all these different parts and how they fit in. So typically, when we just go to a chatbot, we are typing in, you know, um, what is um, what is Azure, uh, what is Microsoft Azure? Well, the the language model may be able to answer that question because. Microsoft Azure may have been one of the documents that it was using to train the, the, the language model. But if something is brand new, maybe we are dealing with a scenario like uh, some of our partners that have um, insurance plans or healthcare plans. Some of those um, insider knowledge may not really be available you know, in the public for OpenAI or for any of these language models right. to use it to train. So we have to use uh, an architecture called retrieval augmented generation. So retrieval augmented generation allows you to find pieces of information that are relevant to the question and then insert that context or that background into the prompt template. And then once you have it in the prompt template, you can now send that to the language model to answer the question. So you may have a scenario like, you know, you can only go out to exercise if, it, if the temperature is under 70 degrees. If it's more than 70 degrees, you, you shouldn't go out to exercise. But if it's under 70 degrees, you know, you should be able to go out to exercise. But now, if you now come and ask a language model, can I go out and exercise? Even though the language model understands these rules, it is not able to tell you what you know you have to do because the information is not complete. So if you want to answer the question, you have to tell it, well, um, if it is below 70 degrees, it's okay to go and exercise. If it's more than 70 degrees, you shouldn't go and exercise. By the way, the temperature is 45 degrees. That's so, important information for this decision. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, so now everything is complete, right? So when, when we have this, uh, this scenario, we are able to use the vector store that we described, described earlier to retrieve chunks of information insert that into the prompt template and then send that to the language model to reason and give us back the response. So the R in this scenario here is the reasoning engine. The signal, the S, is the input signal, like, like the questions. The V, you know, represents the vector database 
and then the P is a prompt template. So when somebody comes with the signal, uh, the question, you have to convert that into uh, a vector that you can send to the vector store, you know, and then retrieve that 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 context, put it in the prompt template, send it back to the reasoning reasoning engine, and then it will give you back uh, the response. So that is that is how a lot of these AI apps that you see happening are uh, able to use vector stores to store all the information that we have, and then we can use it to to answer the questions, especially in scenarios where the information that the user is asking is not part of what the model was trained on. So we have to use vector stores to retrieve the chunks of information that we can now insert into the prompt to allow the the reasoning engine or the language model to figure out how to answer the question. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Israel, thank you so much for your time. This has been really educational for me. No problem, sir. I'm I'm very happy, you know, and I'm grateful that you invited me to the show and I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity to share this information and this this uh, knowledge with our community and with our customers and partners. So thank you for inviting me. Hello. So hello, friends. Hello. Hello, everyone. So today we are doing technology, but as you are you guys already know that because of this video of 47 minutes. Um, also, don't forget to look at the Izzy Academy channel on YouTube um, for technology with AI. It's going to be coming soon. It's not there yet, but it's going to be coming soon. And this is Pinky. <laughs>